with Around the Town in the South. And I'm so excited today to be with Chef Nick Wallace. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am just so amazed. I'm learning more and more about Chef Nick Wallace. He was named one of 2017's Best Chefs in America. America. Yeah, so it's a, it's a huge <laughs> highlight, um, too, uh, all surrounding around Mississippi, too. So they have a book that comes out, too. So under Mississippi, it's me and several other chefs. That is so yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Right here in Mississippi. He's also, he's been featured in Southern Living. I don't want to leave out. He's got so many accolades. Um, he was, he's been on several TV shows. He's been on Comfort Nation um, on season two. He was on Cutthroat Kitchen in 2014. Yep. Um, he served five of the James Beard Foundation um, dinners that were Mississippi-themed dinners. And it was awesome, too. Yeah, and tell us a little bit about that. Not, not everybody's familiar with the James Beard. Um, well, the J James Beard uh, Foundation is uh, one of these nonprofit organizations that chefs really, you know, we really, you know, get to that point of our life. We really want to step into the kitchen. All kinds of amazing chefs from across the world is there putting on all kinds of a great talent that they was blessed with. Um, so about five years ago, uh, me and about seven other chefs from Mississippi, that's what the start of kind of having Mississippi attached to James Beard. So we hosted that dinner. Right after that, I wanted to do a little bit more and I just wanted to be solo. So I got like Dan Blumenthal and Mitchell Moore and we went and created some din some dinners there that I created the menu surrounded by nothing but Mississippi food, and it was all sold out too. Oh, um, well, because Mississippi food's the best. Yeah, we rock. <laughs> we rock. If there's anything we know, it's how to eat. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and thank goodness there's some of us that know how to cook too, like so that the rest of us can benefit. I'm sure you um, can cook. I'm sure you can cook pretty yeah, well. Yeah, and not like you, but <laughs> um, let's see. And um, and you've also uh, just. A little, not quite a year ago, we were on Chopped, and you were the first Mississippian to win the Chopped Championship. It was a proud moment. Um, <laughs> I was on Alton's uh, Challenge, which mm -hmm. in 2014, when I was on Crepeur Kitchen, you know, Alton is the host there. Yeah. Uh, and he beat me up pretty bad. I placed second place, and um, <laughs> I honestly had to lick my wounds, and it took like three years to lick my wounds. And um, I used to get a lot of calls from Food Network, so I just said, you know what, I'm going for it. And I said, this time I'm not going to lose. I'm not coming back home and losing again. Um, so, yeah, I was uh, had my first round um, there. Um, I won with a lot of my, my grandmother's recipes. And uh, I was claimed chop champion. It was a week-long challenge. Um, it was a lot of great chefs there. Uh, a really good friend of mine won the overall championship. Um, but I am still blessed to get chop champion. But I will go back to I will go back. Will you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't well, mind the losses, you know. Tell me, because now I'm a huge Chopped fan. I, I go to sleep every night watching Food Network mm -hmm. because the news is not relaxing at all. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten to where the talk shows even are just too much politics. So to, in order to just relax and get relaxed to go to sleep, I watch Food Network every night, and which is crazy. But but so I, I love that show. What is the one thing that you got in the basket that you just went, oh, crap? Well, um, or was, there more. There might have been more than one thing, but um, I think I think one major one. I talk about it a lot into the schools because the kids always want to ask me about this. It was like, well, what was going on in your mind when you got dry tarantulas? You know, yeah. I am deathly scared of spiders. <laughs> you know, I would I would easily you know call one of the kids or Christine or whoever if you're here. Can you go over there and take care of that? You know, but but this but this spider was <laughs> trying to get got there. here. Yeah, I know. And, and then too, I grew up on a farm and and love nature and all, but I stay away. You know, so um, it just seems like they knew that because they give me this can and you know it was like uh, it's dry tarantulas and you had to taste it. At least you know, as a chef, you want to taste the thing because you don't know what to cooking. do with it. Yeah, until you, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because you had something else, didn't you have? Wasn't it you that had the space something? Yeah, I got. I tore. was thinking that might be something you hadn't had before because no. you hadn't quite been to space. <laughs> <laughs> Mar Marcus Samuelson uh, really, really, you know, chewed me up a little bit because once I tasted the space ice cream, it tasted great. I loved it. It was like dried cotton candy. I loved it. 
Um, but I didn't chop it up or nothing. And I did my grandmother's steamed pudding and I put it in there. Alton loved what came out of it because it was like chocolate and all these kind of bits of caramel and all these mint flavors. All this stuff mm -hmm. was wrapped in one. Um. <laughs> and Margaret was like, man, you need to slow down. And I'm like, you know, look, I never used this before. Can you give me a guide? But you can't talk to him about that. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I just checked it off the list. <laughs> that is so much fun. Well, tell me, how did you get started in, in the culinary world? Just, you know, how, how did this come to be? Well, um, you know, I'm from Edwards, Mississippi, and mm -hmm. around eight years old, me, my mom, and my sister moved to Jackson. And as, you know, coming up in Jackson Public Schools, I wasn't sure. I was a, you know, I was a janitor, like, you know, 14, 15. I used to just, you know, make like little cash money just to bring home to my mom. Um, and then I was a roofer. Mm -hmm. um, and then my mom was very upset with me because my skin was turning even darker, darker, and she said that I was just so unattractive. So um, when she when she killed my spirit and all, uh, I already I always knew I was good in the kitchen because I used to cook for my sister, and my my cousins, and all, my grandmother, and my mom, mm -hmm. and everybody loved all the creations that I did. So I just said, you know what, I'm going for it, and I started my first job at Outback Steakhouse on I-55, and. I learned that I was good with cooking, but I was awful when it comes down to that symphony kind of orchestra, what you need to have when, you know, the expo is calling the grill man and the salad man. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't there, you know, I don't know. I was somewhere else. Maybe I was still <laughs> on the roof. I don't know. And then I went to culinary school and um, my grandmother stoked, told me to keep pushing. And then my culinary teacher told me that if I really want to be different, get out of the freestanding restaurants, go work for a hotel. So mm -hmm. I started working for the Marriott Hotel when I was 21. Um, it took me about three years before I got a promotion. And then I went on to be corporate chef. And then I went mm -hmm. and lived in Anchorage, Alaska with Marriott. Oh, wow. And, and I learned how to make money. Um, that's the most important rule uh, past anything. But it taught me how to show up on time. It taught me how to talk to people. Mm -hmm. it, it, it taught me all of those etiquettes that you need in life other than just being able to do a good plate of food. Right, you know? right. And I know, where where are some of the other places that you've um, worked at around? I know you were at the Art Museum for a while. Yeah, I was recently at the Art Museum. Um, I, I resigned back in November, so I'm a full entrepreneur, um, owner of Nick Wiles Culinary. And uh, I worked at Bravo's. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a good relationship with Jeff Good and Dan Blumenthal. Um, I worked at Orchestra's Grill, if anybody can remember that. It was in Clinton. Yeah. It was a popular I'm a Clinton restaurant. girl. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so, Fernando's. Fernando's on Lake Harbor. You know, I was there when it was the original Fernando's. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's when I used to cut myself all the time because, you know, my Spanish was poor. I guess I didn't <laughs> listen in school. And uh, a, a lot of the cooks and the chefs and all used to teach me at work. And then I'll come back and I'll get it wrong. And it was like, you know what you got to do, right? And I was like, okay. So I had to stay two hours later to cut all the fajita vegetables. Oh. So I went through torture for for a year. But my Spanish is just a, a little bit piquito, right? Better. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope, it, I hope one of them is looking right now. They will just be laughing at me right now and say, get on the vegetables. But yeah. Well, tell me. I know you give back to the community and you've been involved with Jackson Public Schools mm -hmm. and, and giving back in that way. Tell us about that endeavor and, and, and all that's entailed with that. Well, about a little over two years ago, you know, Mayor Hill, which is the food service director of Jackson Public Schools, mm -hmm. she, I had just finished Cutthroat Kitchen. So this was 2014, 2015. She wanted me to come and give out awards for all her cafeteria staff members. They was at the Marriott. Mm -hmm. So I came up, sat on stage with her, and I gave out awards, and it was great. But as I was sitting on the stage, I was like, you know what? This is something I want to do. I want to get involved with mm -hmm. them. I, lo I love all of the workers and all, and I tell them all to call themselves chefs. But because they are, you know, most of they they're really important, even for your local chef, too. Mm -hmm. They know... 500 names. Them kids' names, they know them all yeah, by heart. Yeah. They know if they're allergic to peanuts, you know, whatever. So, you know, that right there draw love because they have they care. They right. really, really, really yeah. care. It takes a special heart. Yeah. And, and, and a normal chef can cannot do that. 
Because uh, by tomorrow, I'll probably forget your name. I'm just joking. That was a joke. No, not my name. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, so the, I asked Mary Hill, I said, Mary Hill, how can I get involved with that, with, with the schools? She said, I really need somebody to come in and teach different recipes and all. And I was like, perfect. So I started doing that for a while. And then I got involved with the Institute of Child Nutrition at Oxford. Mm -hmm. And from there, I got involved with Chef Moody School. So it was like ding, ding, ding. And I, I created Creativity Kitchen. And that's a nonprofit that goes into schools. So I started with Blackburn Middle School, which I graduated from. That was the highlight of announcing the program. Mm -hmm. And then um, Mayor Hill, me and her agreed that three months later, I'll be able to take over all 13 middle schools. So I did. Oh, wow. And I would actually go in every single week and do trainings every single week. And it was a lot of work. And then the menus changed every single month. Mm -hmm. And it was only featured on Monday just so the kids can just have a lot of energy for the rest of the week. So that pushed me to even going even further. I went to Gaston, Alabama, trained about 60 schools there. And just recently, about two weeks ago, I just came back from Hazard, Kentucky. Wow. Yeah. So you're spreading, spreading your knowledge all over the South, which is great. Yeah. And that's what we want to highlight is good stories of the South. So you're, yep. and I know you're a huge advocate for the local farmers mm -hmm. and um, you use a lot of the, the farmers locally and it just, um, makes a huge difference yep. to, to, I mean, it's, it's the food tastes better. It's almost like a That's different right. food than what you, you know, get yeah. at the grocery. Yeah. I don't think, you know, mm -hmm. just thinking about food and all, it's not that hard to think about, you know, it's not. I think about it all the time. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, but, but as far as the preparation of yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's not that hard. It's really, really simple. And that's my approach to anything that I cook. No matter if it's seafood or, 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 or land animals, it doesn't matter, or roots, vegetables coming out the ground. Mm -hmm. I just take that approach, and I just make it just super special. And I remember my past, too. That's one of the things that keep pushing me, because my grandmother, if I turn my back on whatever I'm doing and don't put my 100 in, my grandmother, you know, she, she, she is pretty strong. So uh -huh. I think about those, but that's my family is, is, is a pusher for me. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, um, so tell me what you're doing now. You mentioned a minute ago that you've got um, you, you've got your own business mm -hmm. going, and you're uh, tell us what you got going on now. Well, Nick Wallace Culinary is the business model. Creativity Kitchen is a non um, is the nonprofit model that mm -hmm. I can give back and things. Um, but the for profit, at least everybody knows, it's it's something that you just really have to keep moving. And right now, uh, me and my team is really focused on My Hands Your Kitchen. And that uh, gives me a way to uh, come into people's homes or events, no matter if it's weddings or whatever it might be. And I come in and I put my spin on it. I speak, I talk, I bring gifts. Um, and I come in and sometimes I do six, seven course meals. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's buffet options, receptions, uh, live cooking demonstrations. Uh, this Saturday, I'll be at Jackson State for their crop drop, which they bring in like 50,000 pounds of sweet potatoes. So I'm wow. really, really connected. So I'll do a sweet potato dish, which I'll announce soon. Uh, but that's what I do. Uh, I just did one recently um, in, out in Madison. And I like surprising people. And you got some people that, you know, I love my local restaurants too. And everything is competitive. So it's not, you know, we, we all do it. I'm just mobile with it. Just almost like a food truck in a yeah. sense. Uh, and I think I really, really surprised them because they never did anything in the house. And then two, I'm bringing the level of just as a server bringing it to your your, your table in a, in a oh, fine yeah. restaurant. Same thing. Yeah. Same yeah. thing. So, um, so, and I'm just thinking as you're talking about this, the holidays coming mm -hmm. up. I mean, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a great dinner party and mm -hmm. not have to do the cooking? And yep. you would come in and do that for them? Yeah, we do everything too. We we have everybody coming in from. I mean, whatever you need, we have the staff to do it, and we have we're we're all about bright smiles and and big hearts. So that's our approach too. And we always thank people for letting them come into their home, their kitchen. You know, mm -hmm. um, because honestly, you know, if I wasn't a chef, you know, for somebody coming into your home and kind of taking over and giving you the experience, and you don't have to do anything. You know, it's, it's really, really a lot of appreciation that's involved with oh, it. Oh, yeah. That yeah. sounds wonderful to me. Mm -hmm. 
And, and you've got, um, this is another thing you're doing. The, um, he's got his own spice blend yep. that, um, what, I'm trying to write. It's, it's NYX 26. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> it's uh, a spice blend that has 26 spices. And I did do 12, 13, I wanted to do 26. And it was just so funny. Um, one of my friends, we were sitting um, by the fire pit one day, and this was ooh, four years ago, I think. And it was in the fall time because I love the fall. And we're sitting there around the fire pit. We're roasting marshmallows and, and peanuts and all, and it was a great time. And he just loved 26 and my name together. And it just spoke to me. So I, I, I started I started blending and took, took about 10 different batches before I got it right. Um, but it has everything from marjoram to ginger to allspice to garlic to cumin, coriander, wow. fennel, nutmeg. I mean, everything is in here. And the way I explain this to people is my personality in a bottle. Mm -hmm. It's my personality in a bottle completely. And I have cooked everything from eggs to to uh, fish, to just the veggies, to whatever you want to do. Um, savory cobblers, casseroles, whatever you want to do. Nick's 26 is great. And if you ever wanted to purchase it, you can go to nickwallsculinary.com to find it. Okay, and yeah. that's where they also can find if they want to have you come for an event yes. or anything. Yes, and then too, just a, um, the only retail store that I'm in is Mississippi Grills in Ridgeland. Um, very soon, I'm working on a cookbook. Um, so I'll be announcing that very soon, um, and then we'll have a big push uh, with this and other stuff with Nick. Watson. Oh, well, I'm excited about a cookbook. Yep. Hopefully, mm -hmm. it'll be easy for me to follow. It will. <laughs> it will. Well, um, well, thank you so much for being with us today, and um, we're just we're just so fortunate to have. Um, people like Chef Nick Wallace in, in our communities and giving back, and, and I really appreciate it. Um, and what. I just want to tell you, I have two <laughs> gifts for you. I have a card, and um, I have a bottle of seasoning for you to thank take home. Thank you. Oh, you and, are so sweet. Uh, all the team at Nick Walsh Culinary just want to thank you for doing this. Oh. We appreciate it. And if you don't get gifts every time you go live, you better. I just set the <gasps> stage. I just set the stage. Just okay, so you know. let's see who have I got coming up. Yeah. Take note. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are so sweet. Thank, thank you. you so much. And I do want to um, mention my sponsors before we leave. Um, we couldn't do it with our sponsors, so we're so appreciative. Posh Bump Maternity in, uh, on Main Street, I mean, um, um, Market Street in Flowood. Cute maternity clothes. She, she has like things for special occasions and everyday things that can carry you through afterwards um great place to go shop there's not a lot of places to shop for maternity clothes in this area um his and hers um dot com i've got it in the you have to check the spelling it's um they have a website and they also have a kiosk at the outlet malls um her side has the synagence products and lip scent she's got great head wraps his side has all the sports fanatic stuff all right mm -hmm. who's your team pittsburgh steelers the steelers i'm a steelers fan <laughs> People like people say like, what is that connection? Where did you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a Steelers fan, so no, no, I'm not explaining that at all. Oh. So just know that Steelers, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Saints, Cowboys. I'm not explaining myself. I'm a Steelers fan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've always been Saints. I've grown up Saints, but now that you know, I'm Mississippi State, and now that Dak yeah. went to Cowboys, I had to trade him a Florida Leaves for stars. And there you go. And and if he gets traded, I'll. I'm, I'm just a Dak fan at this point. But um, anyway, check out hisandhers.com. Also, um, my last sponsor I want to mention is Winstead's Men's Clothing in the Brick Streets in Clinton on Jefferson Street. My husband absolutely loves um, the Davis. Winstead owns it. He loves all of the things Davis picks out. He's got um, a good range of, of you know, nicer clothes, and um, if, if you've got a man in your life, it's a great place to go shop for them. Take them there. But um, we want to thank all of our sponsors, and um, thank you, Nick. Thank you. And um, so thank we'll you. be seeing you around the town.